I kind of feel like I've been left behind or that I missed a bandwagon. I was under the impression that Advanced Themer was a direct competitor to Automatic CSS, and because of that, I just disregarded it completely. That was until I came across this video from Amor Vant Web Design that showed an amazing feature for automatic BEM classes. It had me going It blew my mind. It's an amazing feature that I really want to share with you, which I will be showing as number two on my list. And inevitably, like the shiny new toy monkey that I am, I had to investigate the plugin. So today, I want to give you my top 10 favorite features, and I also want to give you my honest review. I did reach out to Maxime, the plugin developer, and he did give me a single site license, which at this time of recording the video was $69. But that was only for the purpose of making this review. But I digress. Without further ado, I got, I got it. it. Let's, Let's try, try it and rate it 1 through 10. Number one on my list is that it comes with ACF Pro. Yes, you heard me right, it comes with ACF Pro. That in and of itself is a massive value, you don't have to pay for another plugin. And here's the thing, I searched high and low on the website to try to find out this information, but it took a post within a Facebook group in order for me to find this out. But nonetheless, it's an awesome feature. And what's really cool about this is that if you have Advanced Custom Fields Pro already on your website and you install Advanced Themer, you can deactivate Advanced Custom Fields Pro and delete it and everything is still gonna show. Totally good. And if you wanna turn this off, you can simply turn it off within its settings, global, miscellaneous, and disable ACF menu item. Number two on my list is the class converter. And this is the one where we can give automatic BEM classes. Without going into it, let me just show you how this works. So let's add a section to my page. And in my section, I want to have content on the left with an image on the right. So let's build that out. I'm gonna add in two blocks. On my top block, we'll add in a heading, text, a button, and my bottom block will add in an image. Now to quote Kevin Geary, we don't want to be chumps. And in order to not be a chump, we'd have to create classes and then style at the class level. But I suggest we start a different way. Let's style at the ID level. So I'm gonna go to my container and we're going to go display grid. I'll change this to a grid of two using automatic CSS. And we will set a gap of space L. Now let's gap these items. We'll go to row gap and space S. Let's set this to an H1, change this to a paragraph, and we'll add our image. Now I want this image to be set to cover, so I will go object fit cover, style, layout, width of 100%, and a height of 100%. And we will give its wrapper a height of, let's just say 40 rem for now. One last thing, let's center it all. We'll click on our container, go content, online item center. Look at that, we've got a section up very quickly, but the problem is it's all at the ID level. So let's change it to classes. On our section, let's go and give this a class. We'll give this a class of about hero. And I want everything under here to be BEM classes. So this will be my container. This will be my content, heading, text, button, image wrapper, and lastly, image. What this will do is that it'll automatically add these names to the BEM class. So if I go right click on my section, class converter, put in my prefix about hero double underscore, the name of the element will be added here. So we'll say I want to create classes on the children only. I want to copy the ID styles to the classes. Yes. And erase the ID styles. Yes. Create classes. Check this out. Everything now has a class. It has an automatic BEM class. Not only that, all of its styling has been moved into the class. So if I check out my image, all of its styling does not exist on the ID, but it is now moved over to a class. So we can style things at the ID level first and then move it all over to classes. This makes workflow so much faster. I'm gonna be using this a lot. You can enable this under Builder Tweaks, Structure Panel, and Class Converter. Number three on my list is a brand new feature called the Style Overview. And what this does is it gives you an overview of styles. So let's say on my container, I want to see all the styles that have been applied to this element. Well, I can click on style overview and see everything that's been applied to it, whether it's with the ID or with any classes. Not only that, I can see all the styles on different breakpoints. I can even make updates. Let's say that on a lower breakpoint, I wanna change this to a grid of one. I can apply it, exit. Let's go to a smaller breakpoint and look at that. Change to a grid of one. This is such a great feature to make sure you don't apply things at the ID level and that everything is applied to a class. You can apply this under Builder Tweaks, Structure Panel, and Style Overview. Number four on my list is the CSS Panel Superpowers. What this does is that when we are in the CSS panel, 
And let's just say we type in root, we do an opening bracket, it auto adds a closing bracket for us. This was one of my biggest gripes when using the CSS panel because I hated adding in those closing brackets or I just forgot to do so, it was such a pain. Not only that, we can also click enter, it'll add in an indent, and it'll auto suggest properties for us. So I could put in background color. I can see things changing here. I can click enter and I can change this to base very quickly. It doesn't look very good, but you guys get the idea. It makes things a lot faster. They're tiny little tweaks, but makes a big difference. You can enable this under builder tweaks, elements, and superpower the custom CSS control. Coming in at number five are variable suggestions. And you might've already seen this throughout the entire video, but what this does is let's say we're adding a color to our section and we wanna add in a variable. So I'll start typing in a variable of let's just say primary. It'll give us an entire list of suggestions based on our input and we can quickly add in what we need. This works anywhere that you're adding a variable. This is just a really good quality of life feature. You can turn this on under builder tweaks, classes and styles, suggestions drop down for CSS variables. Number six on my list is cloning classes. This comes in handy, especially when you're using something like frames or a template library that applies classes automatically to elements. So let me give you an example. Let's add a frame to my page. Type in section up here and we'll insert this one. Now there are classes already applied to this, but what if I wanted to use my own and keep the exact same styling? I'd have to usually do a kind of workaround by creating a class and then copying and pasting the styles. But instead what I can do is clicking on the class, go clone class, and then give this a new class name. We'll save. And all of the CSS will be applied to my brand new class that I created. It's pretty self-explanatory, it clones a class, but it has a lot of uses. You can turn this on under builder tweaks, classes and styles, and clone class. Number seven is plain classes. I was actually about to buy another plugin that allowed me to do this within Bricks, but it's really cool that it's in advanced themer. So typically, let's say I wanted to give this a grid of two and a gap of L with automatic CSS or any utility classes that I've added. I'd have to go in here and go, I want a grid of two and then click up here again. And then I want a gap of L. Well, we don't have to do that. We don't have to keep clicking to re-add things. What we can do instead is I'm gonna remove these we can click on this plain classes button. And in here I can just type in grid two and a gap of L and update. And now I have both of those classes applied in just one swift move. You can turn this on under builder tweaks, classes and styles, plain classes. Number eight is element shortcuts. This adds a panel on the right hand side next to my structure panel where I can add in different elements. For instance, let's add in a section. I'll just click it. Let's add in a container. In my container, we'll add in a heading, some text, a button and an image, whatever we want here. We can add different elements within this sidebar panel. Makes it much faster than having to go up here to the left, go add elements, and then click an element within this list. All of it's just right here. The only thing I feel is missing from this is to be able to add a section that has a container already in it. I don't know if you noticed, but when I add a section, a section added in here, but when I add a section, there is no container inside. So that's the only thing I feel like it's lacking. You can turn this on under builder tweaks, structure panel, enable shortcuts for creating new elements, and then we can select which elements we want. Number nine is really handy, and that's the ability to lock you out of styling at the ID level. What you'll see is if you're on an element and you try to style at the ID, it won't let you select it. You'll have to unlock it, and then you can style at the ID level. The one bad thing about this is that you can still style at the ID when you're on the content tab. So I can add in, change the display to block, or change it to flex and add in any of the settings here. That is one negative to this. It doesn't block you out of that, but it is one more safeguard against applying styles at the ID level. You can turn this on under builder tweaks, classes and styles, lock styles on element ID level. Coming in at number 10 is the media query indicators. So let's say on an element that I had some styles spread out across different breakpoints. Well, if I go to my style panel, I can see right here which ones are styled across different breakpoints. So I can go here and I can actually click on one of these so I can go down to mobile landscape and I can see the changes that are being made. Not only that, but at the very top, I can also see that it'll give me an indicator with a yellow line underneath that there are styles at this breakpoint. It just gives me a very good overview of what I've applied to different elements. You can turn this on under builder tweaks, classes and styles, style indicator in the media queries panel and the breakpoint indicator. 
To give you guys my honest opinion, I think this is a fantastic plugin to add to your toolkit. I've already done so, I've already purchased an unlimited LTD, and yes there is an unlimited LTD, it's just not on their website so you won't find it there. You'll have to purchase a license and then in your account area you'll find an upgrade button where you can then pay the difference for the LTD. But I have my own money invested in this plugin. I'm not just going to tell you go buy this and not buy it myself. I actually think this is a valuable plugin. It just gives you a lot of quality of life features that I myself didn't know I needed until I played with it. Now my biggest gripe with this, and it's also its biggest plus, is that there are so many features. And with so many features, you need to have some really good documentation. And as it stands in version 2, there just isn't very good documentation. There are tooltips next to every feature that tell you a little bit about what it does, but you're still going to have to turn these on, go back in bricks, reload the builder, and then play with it yourself. So it's going to take you some time to do that. And you might actually love that. You might just love playing with the plugin. I myself, I just felt I spent a little bit too much time having to play with it. Navigation is kind of all over the place. Some features you'll have to turn on a feature in order to get access to the others. Just, just a lot of jumping around. Other than that though, I think it's really great. I think it's really solid. And I think Maxime has done a fantastic job with this. And I am curious if you're already using Advanced Themer, what are your current favorite features and how are you using it? Maybe you guys can teach me something. With that, if you guys learned something about Advanced Themer today, please subscribe, leave a like, and I will see you guys in the next video.